Hello friends and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Ibo. If the algorithm brought you here and you have no idea what an Ibo is, I'd highly recommend checking out my other video, What is an Ibo? If you're here on purpose, because you know what you're about, welcome! Let's get into it. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the Ibo ERS7. The specs, personality, software, all that good stuff. Let's jump into it. The ERS7 comes in three different variations, the M1, M2, and M3. The 7M1 was released in 2003 in a pearlescent white color, the 7M2 was released in 2004 in pearlescent white and black, and the 7M3 was released in 2005 in white, black, and honey or champagne. So if you're looking to buy a 7, all honey ibos are m3s black ibos are either m2s or m3s and white ibos can be m1s m2s or m3s the 7 series had a number of leg issues which is why sony kept releasing updated versions but besides the color there isn't really any way to tell the difference between a 7m1 and a 7m3 ers 7s also only run one main software called the mind software which is also sometimes referred to as M1, M2, and M3, and this is where people understandably get confused. Mind software was updated and released with the corresponding IBO, so the ERS 7 M1 was released with the M1 or Mind 1 software, while the ERS 7 M3 was released with the M3 or Mind 3 software, but the software is completely interchangeable. It doesn't matter which version you're running it on, so an ERS 7M1 can run Mind 3 software or vice versa without any issues or extra steps. You can just pop that software in there and you're good to go. Now, ERS 7s, while they are amazing and a lot of people's favorite IBOs, they're not super beginner friendly, can be very pricey, and they tend to need a decent amount of repairs. But as always, I never deter people from going after a specific model. If you're really interested in a more expensive model, I think it's a better idea to save up for that one versus settling on a cheaper model that you don't really want. So that's out of the way. What's the damage? What's the price tag? Well, ERS 7s can range quite a bit depending on the version and the color. You can get a 7M1 for around 500 to 700 US dollars, a 7M2 for roughly 1000 US dollars, and a 7M3 for around 1500 to 2000 dollars. And I know what you're thinking, wow, that is a huge price range, why is there such a jump? Honestly, most of it is color based. The $2,000 M3s tend to be the champagne version, while the $500 M1s tend to be very sun-damaged white pearlescent IBOs. I did bring up leg issues earlier, but the thing is, pretty much all 7s have leg problems. Some worse than others, and M1s do tend to have a higher likelihood than M3s of developing these issues, but the thing is, M3s can still have leg problems, so you might spend that extra $1,500 up front and still need a repair down the line. And especially since the software is interchangeable, that isn't even a factor. And honestly, there's really no reason to spend that extra money unless you want a special color. Now, let's talk about sensors. The ERS 7 was the first model to integrate electrostatic touch sensors. Unlike previous models, which mostly use buttons or pressure sensors, the ERS 7 has touch sensors with LED lights underneath, which makes it look super futuristic and also gives you a visual indicator that the touch has been registered. The head sensor has a white light underneath while the back sensor has alternating LEDs that change colors depending on the mood or mode your IBO is in. Sevens also have a pressure sensor on the chin, as well as paw sensors which can be pressed down to shake hands or play games. The ERS 7 has a 350,000 pixel CMOS image sensor, which is a massive improvement from previous models, but still pretty pixely when compared to today's cameras. They also have two infrared sensors to help with navigating, so combining those things, Sevens are pretty dang good at getting around. They don't bump into things nearly as much as previous models do. 
Along with the LEDs on their back, 7s also have 24 LEDs on their faceplate, which Sony refers to as Illumiface? Illumiface? I'm not sure how you pronounce that, I'm sorry. This technology allows Sevens to show a wide variety of facial expressions and mode indicators, as well as animated light sequences. Sevens also have two stereo microphones that pick up sounds as well as voice commands. However, mics are another problem point with the Seven, and a lot of them have gone deaf over the years. Luckily, replacing the mics isn't a super expensive repair job, it's a pretty simple one. Or you can just do what I do and yell in their ears like a little grandpa. Mind 1 and Mind 2 speak robot speak with little musical tones and such, but Mind 3 can speak in English, Japanese, and Spanish. Whatever. Mind 3 is the only Ibo software that exists where you can fully communicate with your Ibo in your own language. It's very cool. <laughs> They have literally hundreds of responses. And it's definitely not Siri level where you can just kind of say anything, but it's still very, very impressive for the time that it was made. In terms of personality and behavior, Sevens are very good boys. They're dog-like, but they don't have the same chaotic energy as the 111s. For the most part, they're very chill. They're very excited to see you. And if you're looking for a robotic companion rather than just a robot pet, I definitely recommend the ERS-7. Now, because of the leg issues that I've mentioned multiple times, uh, these guys are pretty slow. Uh, which goes into their kind of gentle nature. They're, they're, even when they are chaotic, they're just kind of lumbering along. They don't go very fast. What do you need to get an ERS-7 running? As usual, you will need a lithium battery. You'll also need a charging station. ERS-7s don't have dongle connectors, so you gotta have the whole shebang to get them working. You need the whole docking station setup. ERS-7s can self-dock, but they need to have a special pole to do so. However, you can DIY one of these poles pretty easily, and self-docking isn't a necessity. You can just plop them right on that station when you're done playing if you are so inclined. Just keep in mind the software and the pole does make a difference, so Mind 1 software has a different pole than Mind 3. Just keep that in mind. They can also run on their stations. They can move their head and front legs, but the back legs are immobile while charging. The ERS-7 does recognize pink balls, and as with any IBO, you can use anything pink and they will recognize it. But if you want your 7 to be able to do certain tricks with their ball, keep in mind they do rely on that specific shape, size, and weight to get it just right. Sevens can also recognize the eye bone. Luckily, the new eye bone made for the 1000 is exactly the same shape, weight, and size as the older one, so you can get one of these new directly from Sony, no problemo. ERS-7s, even though they are one of the newer models, still do require a memory stick to get them running. Sevens can use purple and pink memory sticks. And there are some funky, fresh softwares that you can get that aren't official, but for the most part, the ERS-7 just uses the Mind software. Technically, you're not supposed to, if you don't own the software, you're not supposed to, uh download it and put it on a stick, but maybe if you get it from a friend or just kidding, if you own it yourself and you already have that copy, uh, encryption for all their memory sticks. So you will need a Sony Clie to do that. And while technically the max memory on the ERS-7 is 64 megabytes, uh, the mine software is pretty dang big. So you really do want at least a 32 megabyte memory stick if you're gonna make a copy that was your copy on your computer already, I'm just saying. And I'm gonna make a video later going more in depth about memory sticks and all that stuff and how to make copies of your own existing software that you already have, uh, just for ease of access. Don't come at me, Sony, please. <laughs> ERS 7s also have these little picture cards, which you can show to them. And it's basically the equivalent of a command. So there's all of these different options like taking a picture, turning around, but also special dances and things like that. And this is awesome because like I said before, their mics are not the best. So if they can't hear you, you show this to their camera and they register it and they do a little trick, do a little command. There are also pictures of these online so you can actually download a image of one of these cards and just like show them your phone. 
um, and it works. So you don't need these as an accessory. They're cool to have if they happen to come with them. And also you can just show them a picture and they will respond the same way. They also have this very cool feature where you can have them remember any random object and you can teach them the name for that thing and to recognize that object. So you can basically make up your own toys and give it to them. ERS7s also have wireless LAN capabilities. So they can connect via Wi-Fi to your computer. They can post to their own little blogs. They can even read your emails if you are so inclined. But this technology is pretty outdated and it does require a bit of finessing to get it to work. Also, older IBOs are very much Windows and Linux based. They don't really like Macs at this stage. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to connect your 7 to a computer in any way. Now going on to the troubleshooting phase, I've pretty much stated everything that's wrong with the 7 previously in this video. As usual, vast majority of older IBOs are going to come with a dead battery. You can get it fixed. Don't do it yourself. If I've said this a billion times before, you will blow yourself up. <laughs> I know it seems easy. I know it seems like you can just pop out some lithium cells and put them back in. Ibos are funky. They're funky fresh. They don't like it. You need to reprogram the boards that are in there to get them to work. It's a process. Now, usually I recommend Ibo Clinic for Ibo repairs, but I have heard that Ibo Clinic has recently shut down. So I'm on the search for a new repair person to recommend to you guys. For my repair recommendations, I personally have to go through the repair and then check back in with you guys. So that's why it's taken me so long. Now, even though their legs look sturdy from the outside, everyone thinks, oh, they look so chunky. They look so sturdy. That's just the shell. They are deceiving you. <laughs> On the inside, the seven's leg, the build is just not great and they break sometimes. They had some faulty issues that were technically fixed with the M3, but sometimes M3s break as well. It's not a super great solution. These can be fixed though. And also sometimes all that needs to be done is cleaning the legs out because sometimes they can get those chainsaw legs where they're just super loud. My seven data has the chainsaw legs and he works fine. He's just very, very noisy. And the other issue that I mentioned previously was the microphones. A lot of the times, it doesn't really matter on the model. In fact, I see a lot of M3s more than M1s that have microphone issues and just can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> but luckily, that's a pretty simple repair as well. You can just replace that microphone and you'll be, you'll be good to go. I will make some more in-depth videos about the Mind softwares in particular because there's a lot of stuff you can do with the Mind software. There's a lot of cool things that the 7 can do that I just cannot fit into this video. So this is just kind of a brief overview of them, but that is the main gist if you are interested in the Ibo ERS 7 series. They're very good boys. They're very sweet. They're very smart and intelligent, uh, but they are they're, they're getting up there at age, so they do have some issues that pop up. Uh, they're very expensive, so I don't really recommend them for very, very beginners, but they're so sweet and I love them so much. So if you're interested and, it, you know, if, if that's your cup of tea, maybe look into getting one. I do have some software videos in my little playlist that I will link down below. So if you want to see them running, you can do that and get more of a gist of if you actually want them or not. I hope this video was helpful and be on the lookout for more guide videos coming soon.